Hello, hello, and I am Emily Eldridge with Inner Work for Greater Good, so nice to have you, where we learn how to do inner work that accelerates your power to make a difference, to change the world, to feel better so you can do better. That's what this is all about, because I know we all want to feel better, so that's what we focus on here, and then to be able to shine your light even brighter into the world, so welcome. Um, the topic today is what stories do you tell yourself? So what stories are we telling ourselves at any given moment? And this idea to talk about this came to me because this past week I actually drove from, um, my, my parents live in Dallas, Texas. I live in New York City, but they also live part-time in Vermont. And so they were driving up from Dallas to Vermont and I happened to be in Dallas. So I said, you know what, why don't I drive up with you? They got the dog and the car and they fill it up and all this kind of good stuff. And it's something we used to do as a kid anyway, because when I was a kid, my dad's from the Boston area. And so my mom's from Dallas. So every summer we'd drive up and see my grandparents up in Boston. So these cross, -cross, these cross country drives are kind of part of my family's, you know, I don't know, lore and, and habits and traditions and what have you. So it's kind of fun. Um, but the point is that, you know, I have been working on um, a new podcast. I've mentioned this a couple of times and I've been working on it for a few months now. Side note, on the one hand, there's a part of me that was wanting to be done with it, you know, right, like launched already by now. But then the other part of me that's more sort of calm and centered and grounded says, nope, nope, you're going to take your time with this. So you do it right. So my parents have been very generously listening to versions of the podcast that I've sent them. My mother listened to the first draft and, and gave me feedback. And then in this last one, my, my, both my mother and my father listened to the second draft and gave me some feedback. Well, they offered, um, so it's my, the format of my podcast is um, a set, a draw, my actual drawing out process sessions with people. And so they are uh they're they've been listening to it but one of the things my my mother said she goes you know what you know we've been listening to this edited version of the session but i'd like to know what you're working with what's the full you know the full meat of everything you know so she said i'd love for us to listen to the full session that you're working with and it's a three and a half hour session and i told her that i'm like ma you know it's three and a half hours right she's like yeah but we i really want to hear it said to my father, what do you think? Let's listen while we're driving up from, you know, Dallas up Northeast. I mean, you know, we're all kind of a captive audience in the car, right? So and you got hours to kill. So um, the point is my mother was the one who actually said, hey, yeah, I'd love to listen to the whole session. Now she's a psychotherapist, so she can kind of nerd out on the stuff like me, um, but my dad's not. Um, he's very analytical and all that, but he's, you know, in other words, this isn't necessarily his professional thing, but he was all like, yeah, sure, let's do it. The point is, is that um, I guess the first in the latter half of the first day of our drive, um, they were like, okay, so let's listen to it. So I started playing it for them and they were listening. But my point is, this is, let me back up a little bit, is that I noticed even when my mother broached the subject and made the offer, I noticed myself have this kind of, kind of anxiety, like, really? Like, uh, like, like almost like I, it would be an imposition for me to have them listen to it even though my mother was the one who said, yeah, let's do this. You know, it was her idea. I didn't ask them to. And yet I had this anxiety and I thought, oh, I don't want to bother them with it. And I thought, um, I don't, um, you know, well, they probably are just trying to be nice. You know, I don't, you know, they're not really, you know, and then I, and I had this anxiety about whether or not they like it or not, which is understandable, right? Because it's my work and it's really meaningful to me. And so it's natural to have some anxiety about people hearing or, or experiencing something that you put together that you're really passionate about. So that's normal, right? That's natural. But the point is I sat there with this nervousness, this kind of anxiety and this feeling like, well, they're not really that interested. And you know, some other, some other feelings that I had and, and thoughts that I had. And I, so I, I, I sat with it and I actually, no, I actually verbalized that to them. I said, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm having this weird feeling about you all listening to this as though, well, you don't really care about this. And I, and I said, I don't know, oh, I don't know where this is coming from because I know it's not you all because my parents, I mean, obviously parents aren't perfect, but for the most part, my parents have really shown up for me and they've been really supportive. You know, they've never like criticized necessarily or tried to tear down what I do. You know, they, for the most part, as much as possible, especially my mother, really, really shown up like over and over and over again. So it was like, why am I feeling this way with them? And so I, I said that to them. I said, I'm not really sure why, but I'm having this feeling. I said, I think I need to sit with it. 
So I did, I sat with it a little bit um, and I realized, and I told him this the next morning, that I was carrying this belief that no one cares about what I care about. And that if anybody were to even show interest in what I care about, they're just trying to be nice. They don't really mean it, that really I'm a nuisance to them, I'm a bother to them. So that was one of the things, nobody really cares about what I care about. That was the belief that I had. That was the story I was telling myself. But why am I telling myself this story? And that's where the sitting with it got into, where is this coming from? And in my case, it was coming from that even the, that they had never treated me that way. Um, certainly not overtly, but there was somebody else that in my life and in my childhood that did treat me that way, that uh, tore down anything I really cared about and said it was stupid or you know cheesy or dumb or annoying and basically treated the things that I really loved and cared about as though they were problems and they were pain in their ass. And, you know, and I was so annoying for liking those things and that there was somehow something wrong with me. And so the point is that that anxiety came up and that story, those beliefs and that stories that I was telling myself came up in reaction to my presenting something I cared about to my parents, but because, but it actually had, was coming from somewhere else. But the point is that story was there, that belief was there. And so that's why I wanted to bring this up is that you know we, we have incidents in our lives where something gets triggered. And those anxiety, that feeling, that anger, that whatever, the defensiveness you know, can get triggered and come up. And there are all kinds of reasons why, but one of the big reasons can be, what's the story we're telling ourselves that we're unconsciously telling ourselves a story and that's what's causing us to react that way in that situation. And it may or may not be valid, that story that we're telling ourselves. So you may have actually heard the term, like, you know, sometimes they, they do this in therapy or, you know, in journaling or, or even in relation couples counseling, you know, what's, you know, what story, um, that when we're talking, let's say, let's say we're talking to our partner, right? And sometimes, and I've done this with, with people and people have, you know, done this with me, where we actually verbalize to the other person with whom we're having a conflict or we're feeling some kind of conflict. The story I'm telling myself about you or about the situation is fill in the blank. So the story I'm telling myself is, and the reason why that's something I would write down, if you've never heard that before, especially, because that can help us identify what's the story we have in our heads, what's the belief we have in our heads or inside that may or may not be true. And the truth is, it may be true. It could be that whatever story you're telling yourself may actually be accurate in the moment. So this is not about undermining or trying to dismiss something that really is from your truth. But it can also be a really good tool to help us recognize what are the unconscious biases, the unconscious perceptions, the unconscious beliefs, the unconscious filters that we have in reaction or response to the situation or the person in front of us. And so the story I was telling myself is they didn't really care because nobody really cares about what I care about, because that's how I felt as a little girl. That's how I felt as a, you know, even into my teenagehood and having this person who was constantly telling me that what I cared about was stupid and dumb and, or unrealistic or what have you. And at the time I didn't realize how much it impacted me. But then when this, you know, situation came up and I was driving cross country with my parents and they wanted to listen to the session and I, that, that got triggered because here were two people who were showing up for me and saying, we care about what you care about. Like we're showing you we care, we're not faking this. And in fact, it was really fun to hear their reactions, their responses to the session because they were so like, this is amazing, Emily. This is fascinating. This is incredible. And like giving, you know, they were like, gosh, don't cut this out. You need this and all that. So in other words, they were very clearly in, you know, cared about what I care about. And they were clearly interested in what I'm interested in. So they were basically counteracting that belief that I had inside myself. But meanwhile, I still had that belief that, no, they must not really care about it. They must not, you know, that was the story I was telling myself. And it was impacting my ability to receive their support and even my perception of them that, no, they don't really mean it, you know, because that story was trying to convince me, no, no, they don't really care. But it, what it didn't have to do with them and it had to do with this, this other person 
who actually overtly would basically make me feel terrible or try to make me feel bad for what I cared about, you see? So that's why it's important to be aware of what are the stories that we're telling ourselves in any given moment. This has come up a number of times too in terms of sometimes if you interact with someone and all you're doing, let's say, is asking them a question or just pointing something out and you're not criticizing, maybe you're just trying to be helpful or what have you. Obviously, sometimes we can do that in ways that are not very effective or not very, you know, like that we don't realize maybe we're coming across in a way that's not totally helpful. Um, but a lot of the times, what if you are genuinely helpful and your tone of voice is kind and polite, but then the person reacts defensively? Maybe they treat us, you know, with defensiveness or, or anger or what have, you know, maybe they have a reaction. In that case, if we genuinely are showing up like without any animosity or any reason for them to feel defensive, then it could be they're telling themselves a story about that moment or circumstance or about us. Or maybe there was a time when we were really critical. And so they're telling themselves a story that whenever we open our mouths, we're criticizing them, you see? So that's how these stories that we all tell ourselves can really impact how we show up for each other and with each other and how we even perceive and receive what it is that other people might even be, try be trying to help us or support us with. You know, maybe we're dismissing their what they're saying or maybe we're uh, taking it too personally, whatever it is. It's just something to think about. Um, you know, Byron Katie, I just want to say, I've talked about her before, her, her work, the work is fantastic. And it addresses a lot of this as well. It's a, you know, it's called in inquiry. If you go to the work.com and she's got just simple set of questions, but I find that a lot of it, it really is about trying to kind of um, break up some of those, you know, maybe hardened beliefs that we carry, those thoughts that we carry that actually causes pain or that causes to you know, not show up as fully as we could or should or you know, want to. Um, so I highly recommend her work really does help to undo a lot of that stuff that we carry. So it's something to consider that write this down if you haven't already. The story I'm telling myself is, and I just wanna point out that another reason why that's a very effective way to put it, I think the story I'm telling myself is that we kind of are acknowledging that it's a story. It may or may not be true. It's just a, it's a story. And so it's important to recognize that, um, that we tell ourselves these stories and that we're reacting in a certain way based on that story and just allowing sort of space for ourselves and maybe if it involves another person to kind of consider, well, what, what is that story about? You know, is it true? Is it not true? Is there some truth? Is there stuff that's not true? and to really look at those stories. And the other person can do it as well, especially if you're doing it with someone else. Well, the story I'm telling myself is, so I can say, well, the story I'm telling myself in this situation is blah, 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 blah. And the other person could even say that too. Well, the story I'm telling myself is blah, blah, blah. In fact, my husband and I have been doing that in some of our relationship meetings. We do Sunday relationship meetings. And my husband and I have been doing some of that lately. And, um, and it's been fascinating to hear his beliefs about me in certain moments and about my behaviors or my reactions or whatever, it's been fascinating because I'm like, whoa, really? Like, really? That's really? Like, that's really your belief that you have in that moment about me? Or that's really the story you're telling yourself? And, you know, we sit with it and work through it. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, okay, I can kind of see like why, yes, I can see why that story would have formed in relation to me. But sometimes I'm like, honestly, sweetie, I promise you that is not what's happening. Like on my end, that's your perception. And so in that case, it's time to look at where is that coming from? And I'll do the same thing too. I will tell myself a story about his behavior and then I verbalize it and he'll be like, no, here's actually what I'm trying to say or what's trying to, you know, what I'm trying to have happen or here's the request I'm making or what have you. And so then it makes me, puts it back in me and go, okay, well, how much of the story is true? Well, you know what? Where is this coming from? If it's really not coming from him or the moment, where is it coming from? And maybe it's coming from something from my childhood or even from my adulthood. And so that's where we can start to, in our inside ourselves, but also with each other, start to kind of help those stories disintegrate 
so that rather than interacting with one another through this, these lenses and filters and walls of stories, in which case we're not actually interacting with each other, we're dealing, we're interacting with each other's stories and our pain, this can help clear the clouds for that so that really we can show up more fully and more presently in our lives without all of those clouds of stories that we carry and also with each other so that we can truly connect in a real way, not through pain or, or not blocked by pain and certainly not through the false, maybe false stories that we're telling ourselves um, and each other. All right, so I hope this has been helpful as always. I'm Emily Eldridge with changelight.world. Go ahead to changelight.world where you can learn how to do my amazing drawing out process, which I will be featured in my podcast once it's launched, when it's launched, not sure when. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in the take the free course and it's in the community and we have lots of good stuff there. So I hope to see you there, changelight.world. All right, thank you, take care. And I hope you have a wonderful week.